I grew up fascinated with food. With time, I learned the importance of a healthy and holistic lifestyle. I still had a lot of questions about diet though, like which one was the best one? Keto, Atkins, Paleo? Was there an optimal diet for your blood type? Could you really get a wheat belly? Amongst all my confusion, it was clear to me, <laughs> this was not my best life, until I stumbled across a plant-based whole foods lifestyle. Suddenly, it all made sense, from preventing cancer, diabetes and heart disease, feeling the most well and energetic I had ever felt in my entire life, helping the environment and respecting other sentient beings on our beautiful planet. I decided to dig deeper with a little help from the experts and influencers. Can being plant-based really make you a game changer? Is this the most sustainable way of living? This is Plant Perspective. Well, hello there YouTube fam and a very warm welcome to you on this episode of Plant Perspective. If you're not part of my YouTube fam yet, you're very welcome to be, so go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoy the video and find it helpful, don't forget to give it a like. Well, I'm so excited to be joined today by the amazing Alexandra Paul. She is an incredible Hollywood actress, activist, and wellness coach. She's also the co-host of the Switch for Good podcast. Dotsy told us all about it in her episode. Remember that? She starred in over a hundred feature films and TV shows and has acted opposite the likes of Kevin Costner, Tom Hanks and Pierce Brosnan. But you probably best remember her from her Baywatch days where she played the smart and sophisticated Lieutenant Stephanie Horden. Here to share more about her plant-based journey bring her wellness expertise to the table and shed more light on the ethical reasons for going plant-based. She joins us now. Hi Alexandra, it's so lovely to have you on. How are you today? I'm very well, Beverly. It's so nice to speak with you. Thank you for inviting me to be on your YouTube channel. I'm very excited. Hello, every Hello, audience. I'm sure they'll appreciate that shout out, especially to them. And it's such an honor to have you. So thank you. I remember you, of course. I mean, you have such a, a vibe, a body of work. But um, of course, I best remember you from your Baywatch days um, where you played Lieutenant Stephanie Holden. And when Dotsy was on, we were talking about how she was always the, the pretty and smart one. So we aspired to be like her. I loved being on that show. It was so fun. It just wearing a bathing suit and not having to worry about, you know, what am I going to wear? What are the shoes going to be uncomfortable? Etc. We just knew it was going to be a red bathing suit, maybe a jacket if it was cold. Uh, they actually had a rule that we could only wear the jacket um, if we were coming to and from work. So even if it was 40 degrees, we had to be in a bathing suit, except for if we were coming to and from work. Um, but yeah, it was so it was great to go on to be on that show, work on the beach, save people, you know, be around great people. Absolutely. And speaking of saving people, this is so cool. So recently you actually, because you live, you live very close to the beach that Baywatch was actually filmed on. So, and you're a very active person, um, which we'll, we'll talk about in a little while, but you just happen to be, you know, casually swimming one day or out for a walk and you happen to see someone drowning and you save them. It's true. I was at the beach um, and up in Malibu, Zuma Beach, and I was just about to go in myself for my swim when there was a gentleman I saw who was caught in the waves. Zuma Beach is known for its big waves. And he was caught in the break and he couldn't get out. So I swam out and I just kept his head above water. And he, uh, and then we went in. I was able to get him in to where it, he wasn't being pounded by the waves. Because when you go through, just a tip to all you folks who are planning a summer vacation at the beach, you've got to get out of that, those waves. Um, that's the most dangerous part. And if you keep staying in there, you'll just get pounded and pounded. So you either have to go out or come in. Um, but uh, so anyway, yeah, he swore that I saved his life. <laughs> he was very grateful. <laughs> that's wonderful. And um, you transitioned onto a plant-based lifestyle um, about 10, 12 years ago, 
before that you'd been vegetarian since you were 40 which is amazing um so obviously you know being able to save somebody just you know at a drop of a hat requires a lot of stamina and and good health um so tell us a little bit more about how being plant-based has helped you see a difference health-wise Yes, I did turn vegetarian when I was 14 for environmental reasons. And it wasn't until a couple of years later when I read the book Animal Liberation by Peter Singer that I began to realize the ethical reasons in terms of animals. Yeah. And so through uh, my 20s, I gave up wearing animals and using products tested on animals. But it wasn't until I was 47, 46, that I gave up animals uh, dairy completely and became vegan. And I want to say that that 33 years between vegetarianism and veganism, I really regret. It's my biggest regret in my life that it took me so long to go vegan because the changes from when I was vegetarian to vegan were profound. They were mostly psychological. It felt like I was seeing the world in a different way. I was so much more I saw more injustice in the world uh, and inequity. Mm -hmm. And you might think, oh my God, that's so depressing. But no, it was like, it literally was like the scales fell from my eyes. And I began to understand more about speciesism between species, how humans treat different animals so much worse than they will treat another human animal. And even between animals, how we pick and choose who we're going to treat well and who we don't care about. So that was big. But also I saw a lot of, the inequity between humans. And it was like my heart opened up. It was amazing because I really thought that I was going vegan for the animals, but it turns out the animals going vegan really just helped me. And another thing that it helped um, is that it helped my relationship with food because um, between when I was a teenager until I was 28, for, so for 12 years, I was severely bulimic. And then um, I haven't thrown up for over 30 years now. I'm now 58, 57. So, um, uh, so I haven't thrown up for 31 years now, but I still had a, a, a stress around food. And when I became, and that was one of the reasons that I said to myself, oh, I can't become vegan and give up dairy because then it would feel too restrictive. And what I learned was when I actually gave up dairy, my whole world felt less restrictive in terms of food. And I didn't feel deprived and worried that I would go back to my neurotic, anorexic, bulimic state. That didn't happen at all. If anything, I became much more um, healthy around food because now my values were completely aligned with my diet. Wow, that's amazing. And how, how encouraging is that? It's actually a lot more freeing being plant-based. Um, and a lot of folks think, ah, oh, what? I can only eat vegetables? And, you know, that, that must be a bummer. Or, you know, that's, it's far and few things in like between that I can eat. But it's, you're so right. It's actually so liberating. Um, and just um, choosing conscience over ease, that is so liberating. It's empowering. And also just think for all of y'all who haven't yet made the transition, you if you are still um, eating meat and uh, consuming dairy, you get to choose between cow milk and goat milk. Well, we vegans, we get hemp milk, cashew milk, almond milk, um, rice milk, soy milk. I mean, we have about 10 choices in most grocery stores nowadays, right? At least here in the United States. Um, and then in terms of meat, how many meats do you really eat? I mean, most people here in the United States eat chicken over and over. Um, and then occasionally they'll eat beef. You have maybe five, chicken, beef, lamb, um, uh, I don't even know, but there's about five of them. Uh, and so, but just think of how many grains you have. Great, We have, Beverly, uh, as a choice, we have millet and barley and oats and and we eat, um, we can eat alternative meats if we want, or if we don't want, we can just make, our, it's like a whole world opens up when you decide, you know, I'm going to get rid of this cow milk, goat milk, and five um, choices of dead flesh. And I'm going to have, I just, then you start looking around and seeing all the alternatives. Absolutely. Definitely. And the difference that makes on our gut microbiome is just so incredible because variety 
um, is is best really for us. Um, and speaking of you know that whole area of health, you're also a wellness coach, which is incredible. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. And like, have you ever recommended going plant based to any of your clients? Any success stories? I am a wellness coach. I became a wellness coach about five years ago. I have had several um, clients in the UK because all my sessions are done on the phone. And I, I just wanted to help people feel more comfortable with their diet and their lifestyle because I know from being struggling with an eating disorder for that dozen years, how painful it is to not be comfortable with food and our bodies, et cetera. So that was what inspired me. Even though I'm still acting, I just did a, a movie in January of 2021. I'm still acting, but I really enjoy my wellness coaching. And so to answer your question, since I was just rambling, um, no, I don't tell people to go vegan because part of coaching is to help people make their own choices. Mm -hmm. And if they ask me, because a lot of them might kind of know that I'm vegan, um, then I will definitely steer them in that way. And I never, ever, ever steer them towards animal products. But I, what the tenet of coaching is that I don't have the answers, you have the answers. Mm -hmm. And people know that nowadays that eating less meat and dairy is healthier. Mm -hmm. That is much every single client already knows that mm -hmm. and so I can help them get there and I love that I love how you don't steer like you steer them towards plant-based but at the end of the day you're letting them figure it out for themselves um, and that's brilliant because when we make the choice for ourselves it's it's a lot better um, and th that was really my story as well so I knew about the benefits of a plant-based diet very early on um, perhaps in my teens um, when my brother had cancer and um, we were looking at alternative treatments we came across a whole foods plant-based diet um, and the whole family switched over we decided to go plant-based and we noticed energy level differences at, at once um, but unfortunately he didn't survive because it was quite late in, in, in the stages by then but we sort of kind of naturally drifted away uh, from it and then after the pandemic hit we were like uh, we want to live our best lives so let's go back to this and let's reconsider and you know do this and as I, uh, initially we only did it for about 10 days as more of like a, a detox if you will but after day five we were like we feel so much better like why would we go back and then we we started just watching anything we could find in terms of documentaries and information that was out there um, and then it was really after I watched Earthlings um, that I was like yeah I'm never going back again we were all like this is the right decision and it's so different isn't it when you when you choose to go plant-based for health reasons sometimes it's not a strong enough reason and you find yourself kind of going back but when you realize the implications, you know, environmentally um, ethical reasons for going plant-based, it's a whole different story. And it's, it's often a lot more stronger a reason. Um, and I know that's, that's a reason that's very near and dear to your heart as well. Um, you're a really passionate activist. And uh, of course, human rights, animal rights and environmental issues, they're very they're very near to you, very dear to you. So will you tell us a little bit more about those um, those passions of yours, Alexandra? Well, first of all, I want to say I'm so sorry about your brother. And it sounds like you're very, you have a very close-knit, supportive family. And also kudos to you all for doing it again, because the more that we try for your uh, viewers and listeners who might think, oh, I tried that and it didn't work, try again, because they've done studies that people who try and quit cigarettes rarely quit on the first try. It usually takes, on average, I think seven or eight good efforts before it actually sticks. Actually, that, and I'm speaking as a well coach here because that's what I do. I help people change. And so one of the uh, tenets of changing is that it's not, it's a bumpy road sometimes. And so keep, keep trying folks and listening to Beverly and watching shows like hers and they will continue to inspire and motivate you. But yes, I've been an activist since I was seven and I wrote to 
our president uh, of the United States then, who was Richard Nixon, totally dating myself. Um, that would be 70, when was that? If I was seven, it would have been 1970. Um, so anyway, and he wrote back and I asked him to stop pollution. <laughs> and he wrote back. So um, a lot of my values have come from wanting to preserve the environment. So I speak on human overpopulation and encourage our uh, cultures to change their views about the number of kids um, being born and to encourage people to see the value of having smaller families. And I've worked um, hard to, oh gosh, I know this sounds like a big thing, but to stop nuclear weapons, I've protested a lot at the nuclear weapons site in Nevada. Um, and I have also been a proponent of electric cars. I've been driving electric cars since 1990. That is part of my environmental ethic. Since 1990. Oh, that's incredible. I didn't even know that they had cars like that, you know, even then. So it hats off to you because you were probably one of the earliest adopters. Well, actually, here's a bit of trivia for you. In 1899, yeah. 1899 in New York City, 99% uh, of the taxi cabs were electric. Wow. And that's because in the beginning of automobiles, at least in the United States, electric and gas were vying for who was going to win. And women preferred electric cars because they weren't as smelly and as hard to, you could, sort of had to start your gas car by pulling up like you do a lawnmower. Mm -hmm. and it was kind of tough for women. So women preferred electric cars, but alas, the gas cars won out for then. And we had a hundred years of a big fat mistake. <laughs> and now we see the light, better late than never. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I would say that of all my activism, my work with electric cars is something that definitely bore fruit because I was an early adopter and a very early active activist. And um, to, to, uh, to encourage the government support of the electric car technology because in the United States, oil has been subsidized by our government for over a hundred years. And so, you know, it's important that when there's a new technology that government it supported. And so um, the group that I am involved with, Plug in America, and is very active in, in getting uh, government support. So to encourage people to transition, not punish them, encourage. So a lot of my activism is about encouraging people to see the benefits of, for example, small families or electric cars or a plant-based diet instead of punishing them. I mean, if they want to have a less vibrant, healthy natural life, then that is certainly their choice. Certainly. So, okay. So <laughs> voting, I've spent a lot of time. I used to, I spent 18 years once a week registering voters on a street corner in LA with my friend Chuck. And um, I also um, vigiled for eight years uh, against the Iraq war on a street corner. And I've been arrested um, probably, I think around 21 times for either uh, environmental um, uh, civil rights uh, for AIDS activists uh, in back in the 80s um, and uh, in animal rights issues. Um, so yes, activism, I love acting, love it. I love health coaching, but activism feeds my soul. Wow, that's incredible. And speaking of the Iraq war, actually, I've heard that Desmond Tutu, Bishop Desmond Tutu wrote to you to congratulate you because you got, <laughs> you got arrested, um, but it was fruitful and it, it, you know, it, it led to something great. And you've also met Nelson Mandela, which is incredible. Would you like to tell us a little bit about those experiences? Yes. Oh my gosh. So I went in 1994, I went to South Africa to help register voters in South Africa before the first fair and free election there, because uh, black Africans were uh, understandably very suspicious of any kind of governmental process like voting. And so uh, the, the key was to get uh, black voters registered and to the polls. So I went with a group um, to help register. And there I met Man Nelson Mandela. I actually had lunch with him. And I was um, offered to sit next to him, but I let Angela Bassett, the amazing actress Angela Bassett, sit next to him. So she owes me like huge, huge favors for 
years. <laughs> and he was lovely. And I met Bishop uh, Tutu also in my work with this organization, Artists for uh, Free South Africa. And when I was arrested for peacefully protesting the Iraq war on the first day that Americans bombed Iraq, um, he did. And then I spent um, five days in five days in jail. Yeah, five days in jail for that um, that arrest. He, uh, he sent me a note. It was so great. Uh, and back then, at that time, very few Americans were against the war. So um, it was so, yeah, I would say, I don't know, probably 90% of Americans thought we should bomb the heck out of folks. And I uh, did not agree. Uh, being someone who doesn't really believe that bombing is a good way to solve anything. And um, so it was lovely to get that note from Bishop Tutu. Oh, that's wonderful. And then just lastly, Alexandra, you've already given us such great advice uh, and no surprise um, being being the great coach that you are. Um, but <laughs> just lastly, for our viewers who are new to this whole plant-based thing and they're like, okay, so it's more of a lifestyle. I get that. Okay. Um, but they're finding it difficult because it is still relatively new and as you so kindly said I, I'm one of the few really fortunate ones I suppose in terms of how much support I've had um, but not everybody has that so for anyone who is very new to this and it might be a new idea even to their families or friends what would be your advice? Well, to people who are having trouble actually, actually making the change, mm -hmm. then I recommend that they take out everything they don't really care about mm -hmm. that has animals in it. And if they say, oh, I really love cheese, I can't give up cheese, then leave the cheese in and concentrate on the other stuff that doesn't mean as much to you. Because if you eat something that an animal suffered for and you don't really care about it, you sort of like, ah, oh, take it or leave it. Okay, yeah, I'll have this piece of chicken. That is even more disrespectful because that animal suffered for it. So take out those things that are easy for you, the low-hanging fruit, so to speak. And then, um, and then slowly immerse yourself in shows like yours, Beverly, and uh, documentaries that we can find. Um, Earthlings, too. Earthlings is, is a very powerful documentary. Um, and that will help you make the transition and you'll change just like I started to, I changed so much from vegetarian to vegan. I can't tell you, you'd think that I wouldn't change much, but it was a huge change when I finally took out that little bit of dairy from my diet. I mean, I hadn't been wearing animals for years. I hadn't been using products tested on animals for years. I hadn't eaten meat for 33 years, but becoming vegan was like, it was, it was like that little step meant so much. Um, so you can take it slow. I give you permission to take it slow, but continue to educate yourself and immerse yourself with motivational things to keep you going. Absolutely. Brilliant. Words of wisdom, indeed. Thanks, Alexandra. And maybe just to, as a bonus then, as we close, um, you said, you mentioned about how wonderful your time um, with Baywatch was. Um, and since that's how a lot of us remember you, um, do you have any special memory or anything that was really interesting or out there, either on screen or off screen that you'd like to share with us? Well, it's Mike and my castmates were wonderful people, and I'm still close to them today. So um, I saw Jason Simmons, the Aussie, just a few weeks ago. Oh, so, yes, I remember him. Um, you know, the producers were very respectful of my animal beliefs mm -hmm. uh, and my ethical beliefs then, because in my contract, it said that uh, no makeup that uh, used on me could be tested on animals. Oops, here's my cat. Go ahead. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> The producers were very respectful of my ethical choices because in my contract, it, it um, stipulated that no makeup could used on me could be tested on animals. So when they once wrote me into an episode that, when when they once, my cat. <laughs> oh, so is, it, is it a he or she? It's a he. Oh, hello. hello. What's his name? There he is. You can just see his tail on his butt. <laughs> <Bless him. laughs> um, okay, I'm going to start again. What's your cat's name, Alexandra? Sorry? What's your cat's name? 
His name is Simon, and I have a cat named Sam, too. They're named after the great animal philanthropist and the Simpsons creator, Sam Simon. Oh, so that's so cool. Actually, in 2015, but was a, was a real lover of animals and a vegan himself. Wow. Um, so anyway, the, the producers of Baywatch were very respectful of my ethical beliefs because in my contract it said that I couldn't use make that I no makeup used on me it had to all makeup used on me had to be not tested on animals mm -hmm. I had to be cruelty free and so they knew that it, this was an important issue for me so when they once wrote my character Stephanie Holden into a scene at uh, SeaWorld I asked them to take me out because I didn't want to go there and support it and make it look like it was a nice place, et cetera. And they did that. They, they, they just wrote my character out and it was fine. And I really appreciated them doing that um, for me. Yeah, that's so wonderful, isn't it? And like, it makes all the difference when those who are working with respect our values and they get it. Um, and it seems like the team really got it. So that's fantastic. I think they knew that I wasn't just being a diva, that it was important mm -hmm. to me. Um, so, and I, I didn't talk about being a vegetarian, but back then in the 90s, if you didn't eat meat, it was sort of obvious. Like there, I think there was only, Jason was vegetarian, but otherwise, Jason Simmons, the Australian, mm -hmm. but otherwise nobody else was. Yeah. <laughs> well, Alexandra, thank you so much for all the incredible information you've shared with us today and um, the stories as well. And um, so interesting. And thank you again for just being an inspiration uh, to not just girls and women world over because you were, uh, of course, uh, as Stephanie, um, but for being an inspiration to people all over the world with all that you do and all that you've continued to do. So thank you. Thank you so much. And Simon says thank you too for tolerating him. <laughs>